Hey Brigadine fans, welcome back to Brigadine Legend of Renarizia Kingdom Class. Or, sorry, Kingdom Cast. Uh, Kingdom Class, yes, we could try talking about some of their classes, which I will, but it's the Kingdom Cast of the Nations, so let's go over it. So, this is the Kingdom Cast of the Shinobi Tribe. So let's talk about the Shinobi Tribe today. Let's have some fun with this, and we will try to get a better understanding as to what's going on here. I'm going to try to make some connections towards how I think this kind of goes and relates to the original Brigadine game, which there are definitely some connections with some of the characters and some of the Kingdom casts that I've already done, and so there probably will be here too. So let's look for it. Let's, you know, spot it out, find it. If you're, if you're like, I found it, I found it, leave it in the comments down below. Let me know what you have found, okay? But let's go ahead, I'm going to talk about this, and uh, we're going to go over this and see what this is all about. So, all right, the Shinobi tribe. Occupying the deep forest fortress of the former Hazamu nation, this tribe has chosen a path of self-rule by only women. While using Shinobi magic to work as spies or mercenaries for other countries to support themselves, they crave the day when they will be truly free from the influences of major nations. Infusing this wish into the Brigandine passed down from generation to generation in the village, a tribe calls it the Brigandine of Freedom. Okay, let's talk about this a little bit. All right, so what do we got here? You know, this is a, uh, it was a part of a former nation, Hazumu nation. Now this is called a tribe and it's within a forest fortress. So what that literally kind of tells me and literally kind of tells everybody is that this was a gigantic nation at one point. And now, uh, due to whatever reason, maybe due to magic, maybe due to black magic because they have black magic, maybe due to that, it's been reduced to a forest fortress, you know, just a, a small little area that's just been overgrown like the the whole city is was destroyed most of it was overgrown and now all that's really left is just their little forest their little happy um i would say merry men from robin hood but this is mostly will <laughs> mostly ruled by women so start thinking uh, amazonians here so i think that's probably the best way to look at it uh so all right so anyways that's that's kind of um what happened uh it was a bigger nation now it's a smaller nation ruled by women. Uh, they've been used as spies or mercenaries, so they are, you know, doing uh, the spy master job, you know, for the for the other nations all over the place, helping them out. And so that's their way to support themselves. That's how they make their coin. Uh, so, you know, throw a coin to your witcher. I guess that would be the best saying for this. I don't know, but, um, you know, they're out there doing work and uh, for other people. So it's kind of like a mercenary group. I don't know if it's a whole mercenary group, but they seem to be like, well, this is our own nation, but, you know, we go and do this, do work for other nations because of, you know, that's that's what we do best at. So that's probably all what this is about. So it's kind of like they do work for other nations. Um... It almost fits in with Kerleon, in a sense, like Kerleon allies with Domekia. So it almost makes sense in that way. But then again, people would be like, no, it really doesn't. So, like, Domekia, or no, Kerleon, Kerleon allies with Domekia because they know, because Kai is a very smart person, you know, he just, he, he's, a, he's a wise um, warlock, you know, he, he knows a lot of what's going on. And so as far as being a part of a mercenary or an assassin class, they're going to have Intel as well. So that the way that they receive their information might not have been the same way that Kai received his information, but he realized that Lance was in the right to go back and get his territory. And so he allied with Lance immediately and he goes out to fight, you know, uh, so that, his people don't suffer anymore. And so Kerleon kind of goes off in this whole, I'm going to help my people, you know, so that, um, 
you know, they won't be conquered and destroyed by all this. And so it has this kind of feel like it's very close to it because they're talking about freedom. You know, Carleon didn't want to be crushed and confined, so, you know, he, he kind of picked an ally. I don't know if the Shinobi tribe's going to have an ally here, but also I, maybe it's the color influence too, but it seems like the Shinobi tribe might be uh, in, a, in some kind of semblance similar to Carleon. Let me know what you think down below. I'd like to know this because I feel like maybe there's some kind of loose connection here. But it does feel like a little bit of a connection, so I'd like to know that. But let's go on with the the characters here. Let's talk about them, and let's see what your let's see what your opinions are about all this stuff. So, all right, Talia here. Let's read about her. Character voice: Minami Tanaka. She is a female. She's 17. Shinobi leader, so she's the ruler. All right. So profile: daughter of the Shinobi clan chief Della. Although still naive in her ways, this young lady is an elite among the powerful shinobi warriors, residing in the deep forests of the former Hazem nation and ruled over by women. The shinobi tribes only wish to be left alone. However, the flames of war that ravage every corner of the continent has slowly chipped away at their freedom. After witnessing the death of her respected older sister, Rei, Talia dons the Brignina of freedom passed down in her tribe from generation to generation and goes to war determined to gain true freedom once and for all now reading this last line it just from playing Carleon for some time it just kind of sounds similar to Carleon the way that uh things kind of play out story-wise so that's kind of the reason I'm coming to this point here and for just from reading her profile too I'm getting that impression as well so I'm getting the impression that the shinobi tribe is Kind of like a new Carleon, possibly. Let me know your opinion. You might disagree. And if you disagree, you know, let's uh, go ahead and uh, tell me about it. So, anyways, what I find interesting here is that um, they talk about the death of her older sister, Ray. Now, I just saw a little tweet on uh, Twitter about this, so I will leave the tweet link down below so you can see her profile picture. I'm sure they will have also this profile picture in the game and maybe you get to play as Ray a little bit. I don't know. I know that um, Noe in uh, Brigandine, uh, Legend of Forcina, she does pass away at, um, after you beat the game with Norgard. And also if you play a, a higher tier um, timeline, there's three different timelines you can play with the multiplayer. So there's three different timelines that you can play with multiplayer but um and one of the higher tiers she passed away i think it's um i think it's either the second or third one but uh so this kind of happens here too uh noi in the original burgundine game uh was kind of a love um inspiration to vinard uh vinard did like her and uh, unfortunately she had a um, she she had a disease she was going to pass away from so uh, you know there was a death there and so this I, I can't say fully this goes along that same line but she is in here so she I'm just saying just because of my knowledge of the original bringing <laughs> the original bringing game is that she might be a playable character, possibly. I mean, there is a tweet with a picture and a profile, so possibly she might, Ray might be in the game, maybe for a short while. So we'll see. But either way. So that's kind of what I think about that. I think this might be picking up where um, Carleon left off from the original. And that's that's my thoughts on that. So let's go to the next character here. Let's see who's up next. Holy schmoly. <laughs> wow. Wow, wow, wow. All right. Della. Okay. Character voice is Yumi Sunematsu. She is a female 41 assassin. All right. The profile, Shinobi tribe chief known as Mother. 
and the imparter of the unique shinobi magic developed from conventional black magic. Although she showers her daughter Tala with love, she views her responsibility as the mother and law keeper of the shinobi village as her most important duty. Whenever Della is torn between her roles as a clan protector and mother to her daughter, Medessa will be there to gently lend a listening ear. Okay. Um, this this almost totally tongue twisted me. I was about to say uh, <laughs> she views her responsibility as the mother-in-law. <laughs> I was about to say that <laughs> instead of in law. I was like mother. Oh, mother and okay. Sorry. Um, anyways, so she is Tala's mom, and uh, she's apparently a good mom. So you know that's a good thing. And so she's an assassin, and she does black magic. So this is going to be really interesting to see what happens here. Now, in the previous one with Gumol, the Republic of Gumol, there was a character in there that was a rogue. And so I said, well, I think she's going to be like a middle-tier ninja, or maybe um, like a middle-tier or low-tier ninja or something. Here, I think this assassin class from... Everything I've been able to glean with assassins. Every time I hear assassin, I think top agent, secret agent, ninja. That's that's always what comes to mind. Now it's a little interesting here that she has a she has a staff. You see the staff right there? Right. She's got a staff. It doesn't really look like a a ninja blade, but maybe it's like a new design for a ninja blade where it like shoots out magic, kind of like a Squall's, you know, uh, gun blade from Final Fantasy VIII. I I don't know, but the thing is, that's pretty cool. I, I don't know what's going to happen here. I want to say she is, I, I want to say for this country, she's probably going to start as a final tier ninja. Just like how some countries start with like, like Dinadan was the blade master, you know, he was like the best knight in the game, you know, and, and you get like one super knight per country, and if one country didn't have a super knight, then you had a couple knights that were just about to become third tier. You know, so you were you were close. You didn't have like one super awesome knight, but you had a lot of knights that could very well get there very quickly. And so I think Della is as an assassin is gonna be like a Saraha, like ninja master class. That's my guess. That's my guess. Uh let me know what you think about this, but that's what I think is going to happen. Now, why does she have like a rod and it talks about black magic? Well, Grand Edition had bolt attacks for the, the higher ninjas and a react ability. So like an auto two turn, you get to go twice kind of thing. So will they do that here? Very well possible they could do it. I'm seeing so many similarities between this and the original Brigadine game that the old the old school Brigadine players like me and a lot of people that are coming here too are going to really enjoy that. So I think that's possible here. Um, I don't know. It could be a whole new thing. I mean, she could be more of a mage, you know, with some like shuriken abilities where she can like do magic and she can move and do magic or something. I don't know. We'll, you know, we'll have to see. But I keep getting this whole she's a ninja thing going on here in my head. It's just just going back and forth, back and forth. She's I think she's gonna be the ninja. But she's got these like she's got these horns on the top of her head, which I mean, I don't think they're you know, a part of her. I think it's just a part of her outfit. But it just makes me think hunter. So it makes me think assassin, like ninja. So that's that's my impression. Let me know what you think. I'd love to know. But we'll go on from here. Let's keep going here. So I think this will, if if she is in here, she's it's gonna be like she's a third tier ninja for this for this team, and she'll be like the best one here, probably. Anyways, let's go on. So let's go to Medessa. Ooh. That's a pretty nice pick right there. So Medessa character voice is Kiko Nomoto. The female, 38. Her class is a healer. Okay, so what's she about? Advisor to Shinobi Chief Della. So the mother we were just looking at. 
All right, Medessa understands her leader deeply. Her bewitching looks are said to be capable of entrancing not only enemy knights, but monsters on a battlefield as well. Medessa's daughter, Ray, lost her life while on a mission to the Mana Celis Celestia Theocracy. This tragedy hardened Talia's resolve to take up arms against enemy nations. Medessa chooses to fight alongside Talia in order to gain freedom for her tribe. All right. So, what do we have here? What do we have here? It seems kind of like... Um, I don't know if I should say like it's a close semblance to Esmerie, but they do mention... And tre you know her her looks uh, and how good they are and it attracts enemy knights and monsters on the battlefield as well so that's sort of a small little nod little you know tip of the hat to the charm skill that was a part of some of the healing classes in Burgundine so she will have charm and it seems like I don't know if she's going to have a high enough intelligence to do it very well. She could, but she will have the ability to charm as a healer. So that's one of the skills she has. So she's sad about her daughter. Um, so it makes her kind of upset, probably a little more to Mana Celestia Theocracy. I would imagine just due to the fact is because her daughter was on a mission to Mana Cilicia. Doesn't really mention much else other than that, so I'm just gonna say she Medissa is not happy with the theocracy based upon what happened to her daughter. I'm just gonna go ahead and say that. I think it sounds very logic to say that. Uh so she wants to take up arms against enemy nations, makes sense. So she's going to fight alongside Talia in order to gain freedom for her, the tribe. So they're kind of working together, you know, all making decisions for what they want to do. So she's a healer class. She might be a decent healer class. I don't really know much else besides that. But um, it seems like if she has the ability to, you know, do charm and all that, she might have a good intelligence to be able to do it. So it's possible that she does. So, anyways, let's move on to the next character here. Um, let's see what character we're going to move on to. Okay, Sid. All right, these things are coming out so fast, too, so I'm, I'm going to have to try to keep up a little bit uh, more <laughs> as well. Um, all right, so Sid, character voice, Wataru Atano. He's a male, age 22, swordsman. This elite warrior is a member of the mercenary troop led by Yos. Okay. He has survived countless scenes of carnage thanks to his mastery of the sword and an excellent sense of smell. For some reason, he has developed a standoffish nature and a hatred of women. Nevertheless, there are certain principles Sid adheres firmly to despite the harsh environment he has survived. He may have only met Ray shortly before her firm resolve led to her death, but he has declined to fight alongside the Shinobi tribe in order to repay his debt of obligation to her. Okay, that's very interesting. So Sid, you know, I th it wasn't Sid in all the Final Fantasies too. <laughs> I think Sid was in all the Final Fantasies too. I think he's making an appearance here as well. Now he's a badass swordsman. <laughs> so let's see what let's see what we can gate out of this here. Uh so he will be the samurai class. Uh according to the uh the American English understanding that it'll be the samurai class. Because it kind of looks that way. Um and so what is he about really, you know? Elite warrior, a member of a mercenary troop led by Yos. Okay, he survived countless scenes. So he's like, he's kind you know what he's like? He's like the Garant. This is the new Garant of, I'm just going to go ahead and say he's the new Garant right here. Sid is the new Garant. I'm going to call it, stamp it, stamp of approval. 
you know, stamping a platinum. I don't know. It's time. Stamping something. Just, just, just give it a title. Uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and say he's a new Garrett because just because, you know, I am the. <laughs> I've been through a hundred battles. You know that that kind of Garrett. Um, that, that's, that's why I'm gonna go ahead and say it. Um, standoffish nature and a hatred of women. Was Garrett? Did Garrett have a hatred of women? Hmm. Meligant was a little. Well, no. No, Meligant was just. Meligant was Meligant. Um, I don't know. I. I Okay, I can't I can't find anything there with hatred of women. I don't I don't think there's another character in a Brigadine game that really had a hatred of women. Um, nevertheless, there are certain principles Sid adheres firmly to, despite the harsh environment he has survived. So he had hired, so he adheres to certain um, principles. Okay, so. He has standards. He has a sense of judgment. So what happened up there with how many battles he survived, his sense of judgment, his um, his sort of loyalty. I'm going to go ahead and say this to the new Garant right now. You can agree with me. You can disagree with me. But I feel like 90, 95% of me is going to go, yeah, yeah, Garant, I, I see what you're doing. <laughs> Sid is the new Garant for me. Let me know what you think. But anyways, let's continue here. Um, so we have only met... He may only have met Ray shortly before her firm resolve led to her death. But he decided to fight alongside a Shomi Tiger in order to repay his debt obligation to her. So it's kind of... This actually does sound very similar to Garant, actually. Because Garant, you know, couldn't protect the king. But he was going to protect the prince. So... This guy, um, Sid, could not protect Ray, but now he's decided to fight along Shinobi Tribe in order to repay his debt obligation to her. So now he's going to protect Talia. So this sounds very, 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 very much like Garrett. Uh, let me know what you think down below, but I feel like I'm connecting the dots here. I think I am. I think I am. It's, it's kind of fun, too. It's kind of fun. Like, yeah, I think I've, I think I figured this guy out. All right, so we're going on to uh, uh, Jose or Jose. I don't know if they're um, if maybe the previous one is a little different than this because um, Sid was talking about Yos, and this guy's name is Jose. So um, from an English-speaking perspective, it's two different words, but uh, sometimes you use. Like, if in other languages, the J would sound like a Y, so I don't know why. It, I guess it could sound a little confusing. Maybe it's a different person. Let's let's read on here and let's see. Maybe there was a slight editing error. I don't know. Probably not. Maybe it's just me. So let's go ahead and read about him here. Okay, so Jose. All right, character voice is Kichi Sono, Sonobi. Sonobi? I butchered that. I'm sorry. <laughs> Kichi Sonobi. He's a male. He's age 55. He's a swordsman. Leader of the mercenary troop Sid belongs to. Okay, so maybe there is a slight translation here. Um, I kind of hope so. Otherwise, if they use Yos and Jos a lot, I will get a little confused. Um, all right, so leader of the mercenary troop Sid belongs to. Impressed by Ray's self-sacrificing death during a mission to the Mana Cilicia Theocracy, he pays the Shinobi tribe a visit. There he learns of the Shinobi tribe's determination to fight for their freedom and decides to join their cause. As a well-traveling mercenary with battle achievements all across the continent, his knowledge and experience will certainly prove invaluable to the Shinobi tribe. Okay, I think there might be a little bit of a uh, an editorial error there, possibly, unless there's another guy named Yos that isn't this Jos guy here. 
but from if you say it in different ways um like i said the j uh will sound like a y especially i think german a j will sound like a y like if you were to say uh jan in english it would sound like jan but if you were to say it in german it'd be jan so uh at least from what i've what i've learned but um i don't know let's let's look at this here so according to this go back and i'm gonna look at this a little bit maybe there is a little error here member of the mercenary troop i led by yos here see it right up there uh so okay I don't know. I think there's just an editorial error here. I think I'm just I think I'm just nitpicking the editorial error here because um, I'm trying to be accurate with this, but maybe yeah, maybe that's it. Either way, let's let's try to figure him out. Okay, not a big deal, not a big deal, but let's try to figure out and see who he is kind of like. So he has a sword. I can't see what I, I can't see what else it kind of looks like. It could be a samurai sword because of the circular position here. It's either that or a, like a gladius, maybe a Roman sword. But I mean, it looks kind of thin, and I know I'm just kind of seeing the scabbard here, but we might be looking at another samurai. So this could be uh, well, there was Garant, and then there was. Um, um, Escalados. So this could be like an Escalados, possibly. Escalados was like 50, 60 years old. Um, he originally, Escalados, was the leader to Garant. Escalados was Garant's teacher. He was his master as far as sword fighting goes and all that. So here it says he's the leader of the mercenary troop Sid belongs to. So Sid is not the master. Jose, Jose, or is it uh, Jos? Jos is the master here. Um, or Jos, sorry. Uh, Jos is the master here. And uh, he's a swordsman, so he might be another samurai. But it seems like he... Jos is probably the Escalados equivalent. Because... Garrett moved on with Prince Lance because of the split with Ascaris and Omechia. Uh, and in here, Yos is the leader of this band. And, but they, they haven't torn apart. They haven't gone separate ways. So it seems like the leader of... of um, the leader of Sid is still in play like he's he's still there he's still available for him so that's that's kind of what i'm getting off of this so i'm i'm thinking it's probably like uh like a escalados anyways so he's um pressed by race of sacrificing death during a mission pays the tribe to visit so he's he's impressed by uh her you know sacrificing herself to to complete the mission like you know the point of what they were doing so he likes their determination, fight for their freedom, decides to join, as well as a traveling mercenary with battle achievements all across the continent. His knowledge and experience will certainly improve valuable, invaluable to the Shinobi tribe. So he sounds like a very well-versed swordsman. Could be on par with maybe a Dinadan. Maybe, possibly. Uh, the, the only thing is Dinadan was, was considered the sword master, although... Escalados was in his own right kind of like one but I, I I keep getting this Escalados feel from this guy this Jose or Jose I'm probably saying this wrong let me know <laughs> if I am I don't I don't know I think I'm saying it kind of right now Jose so I'm getting the whole Escalados feels that's what I'm getting let me know what you think let's move on Let's go on to the last character here and let's let's wrap this up today okay all right toby toby move this thing up here good okay so toby character voice is 
Kiuchi, Sakaguchi. I hope I said your first name right. Gender male, age 40. Bazu Knight. Bazo Knight. A Bazu Knight? Could be Bazu Knight. Yeah, that kind of makes sense. Bazu Knight. Although a mix between a wild Bazu and a Barrett clan fairy. Hey! I was saying that. I was saying the bear clans are fairies. And I was and it's pointing it right out right here. Although a mix between a wild Bazoo and a Barrett clan fairy, Toby's inhumane appearance does not bother Talia in the least. Toby is not only Talia's martial arts teacher, but also someone special because of the fatherly warmth he provides. Their bond transcends racial boundaries and brings greater strength to the Shinobi tribe's military. Whenever Toby finds something he thinks may amuse children, he stuffs it in his pockets. He seems to be concerned about the two children he left behind. Okay, so this is kind of a... Uh, seems like he's a warrior, he's, he's, he's trying to be a family guy, and uh, yeah, so he is... He's a crossbreed between a couple different things, a wild bazoo, which from just looking at him, I kind of want to say he's like a wolf class. Maybe that's or maybe that's the, the emblem for this the symbol here for their tribe. I don't know. Uh, but he looks kind of like either between like a, a werewolf or a werecat or I can't tell. It's hard to say, but he's got those, the, you know, he's kind of has those long fairy ears there. And um, I will have to get more information on this guy. That's for sure. I just keep thinking of Umero. Remember Umero? Do you remember him? I keep thinking of Umero. Yeah, the wild beast man. Uh, really powerful. So if he is a... If Toby is a martial artist character, this is going to be, we're, we're going to be looking at a Dillard, a Shred, a Shast. We're going to be looking at, you know, just big, you know, um, um, champion like qualities here. We're going to be looking at something that's along the lines of champion. He might be kind of a project knight. I don't know. I I'm, Maybe he's not because he's kind of like the teacher of Talia. You know, he's a martial artist teacher, so he's probably middle tier, if anything. He's middle tier. I mean, maybe he's end class, and maybe he's end tier. I don't know. But uh, he's probably starting middle tier. But he's going to be pretty powerful, it looks like. He's probably going to be pretty, pretty strong. Just because he's like a whole new, whole new hybrid uh, type, you know, uh, race here. So that's going to be very interesting to see what happens with this. Uh, ties into the original Brigadine game. Um, who could I? Who could I pin him on? Who could who could be like Toby from the original Brigadine game? Oh man, who to think of? I can't really. I can't get off the top of my head. I can't. I cannot come up with a cross breed monster class that was that was there right off the top of my head. Um, who could be that, though? I don't know. I can't come up with anything. So this is like a whole new thing that, that's kind of in here. I, I don't know. Uh, it's cool. It's very cool, but it's a unique new thing, which I think new games that come out, too, should have some unique new things, too. You know, if they're all just carbon copies of the same thing you just had before, it's it's really just, you know... Um, it's more of a remastering of that perspective, uh, you know, but to have a whole new game, you should have some new characters like this. So I'm actually really happy that this is here. This is cool. So, yeah, look forward to Toby. If you want a cool, interesting, you, you want to go, you know, Hulk out and, you know, become a giant beast here and, and be a, a beastly martial artist. Well, you can play as Toby, you know, so that's what's there. Um... Yeah, I, I I don't know why I keep trying to think of who am I gonna, who's like Toby here? You know, you know, you had a couple of the elf classes that were in there, uh, Adelicia. I don't think Adelicia was human. 
Just from the textual of the story, I don't think she was human. I think she was a spirit. I don't think she was human. Although she does come to play with your party. But, you know, from the way the text seems to be, she was either a dragon spirit and she just appears as a human or she's just a spirit. I don't know. I can't say. You might be like, no, it's not possible. Everything is... They have gins in there. <laughs> you know, they have... You know, they have... Um, Ethereal things and our angels, demons, those are things, those are ethereal things. So can an ethereal uh, thing be a leader in a battlefield? Yeah, I think so. I think it's possible. And they have elementals now in this game, so yeah, that's ethereal. That's not a fully physical thing. I mean, I guess in a plasma-like sense, it's a part in this reality, but um, not completely. So yeah, I don't know what to pin Toby to. I'm sorry, I, I can't. I can't see who that might work with, really. Like, as far as the story goes, who could we pin his story to? Like, who would be who he? Who would Toby be like? Um, he's like a teacher. He's he's nice to kids. You know, he, he's friendly for kid. He's friendly to kids. He misses the kids he left behind. Um. The story like Rod comes to my mind. Story like maybe George. Um, maybe Chantel. Maybe a little bit of that. Um, maybe he's similar to Batarchus. I can't really see Shas being similar. I mean, I know they're you know they're, they're going to be a part of that the grappler class possibly, champion class. But I'm, maybe Batterkiss is a close fit for Toby. Maybe he's like a Batterkiss. You know Batterkiss from New Omechia? If you read his story, um, maybe he's similar to that. Um, I'm having a hard time. Anyways, so what does this seem like to me? What does this kind of feel? It it sort of feels like there's different people coming together to help out this tiny little tribe nation to overcome things and become free, you know, for once without being uh, involved in other people's wars. And it's, it's kind of an interesting play because, you know, Carleon joins Noemechia to help them with their war. Um, whereas they're like just going for independence to get away from being utilized by other people. But in the same sense, Noemechia which initially was Padstow, which if you don't know the whole story behind New Omechia, it initially was Padstow and it was, the kingdom was quite literally given over to Prince Lance. As soon as Prince Lance gets ejected out of what was Omechia and uh, Prince Lance's father was killed. So uh, it seems like Kai, um, I, I guess they were friendly with New Omechia or with Padstow in the past. To some degree, uh, the story doesn't really go into super detail about that, but it literally says like, well, they were kind of friendly in the past, or, or them and Nuomeki were friendly in the past, and um, what it seems to kind of be is that it, it might be that like Kirlian was kind of gonna was going to help Nuomeki because they knew what was going to happen, like everybody was going to evade and attack, and they didn't want that to happen. Their people, they wanted to be free, or they, you know, like Kai was kind of like a a very good person but he always had these existential questions he always asked himself you know and um you know Vinard wasn't like that like Vi I think Vinard and Kai were very much the same mentally you know even Denadan kind of says that too to some degree but Kai kind of goes back and forth on these these ideas of like should he go and fight to conquer or should he just stay back and just play defense and so he Kai's kind of going forward he's picking an alliance choosing a side and just kind of going forward with it just so he can kind of maintain what he has and kind of be free in that sense in that sense and so that's the reason why i think that uh this country here shinobi the shinobi tribe is similar to carleon of brigantine legend of forcina so i think there are some similarities there because of that and because these three women here they're pretty much the rulers 
and there, uh, there might be some other ruling class there as well, but they're the ones that you can play. They're the main characters you can play as, uh, Talia, Della, and Medissa. And then you've got these other two mercenary guys here, this uh, Sid and Jose, or Josie. I think it's, or maybe it's Joss, Jossie. <laughs> Someone's got to help you with this one. Um, but then they're coming to help out, right? So what this what this sounds like and what this seems to be like is how Marriott goes on a little quest, finds Melia, right? So she finds Melia and then Melia goes on, you send Melia out to quest, and Melia finds uh, uh, Gush or Gash and finds um, uh, Lakara and uh, just, I just forgot the other guy's name. Um, but she finds three other knights, and I'm sorry, I forgot, I forgot his name. <laughs> I don't know why I'm doing that. I'm having like these mental blocks now because I'm like, I think it's because I'm trying to learn a whole bunch of new stuff now. Um, but um, well, it's not Shast. It's it's uh, it's Elute. Yeah, Elute. Yeah, Elute. So she finds Elute. And then she finds then Ulut and Melia go to find uh, Gush or Gash, which I think it should just be called Gush. It sounds, I like that name better. And then they go find Lakara. So anyways, long story short, uh, too long didn't read. Uh, <laughs> these two characters kind of come to help out, right? So it's almost in the same sense as Carleon, where you do a couple questing and then you get some other knights that don't want to be involved in the war come to help out. Now these guys are mercenaries though. So it's interesting how it seems like it's a connection, but also a little bit of a twist. You know, it's like a little twist to it, you know what I mean? Um, and it's interesting that it's like these two characters kind of follow in sort of the same style. Like they, they would come from... Like, if we're looking at Old Burgundine, uh, Legend of Forcina, uh, Sid and Josie, they would be Numekians. It would seem like, you know? Uh, so, like, these two other guys, they come from another country, which, uh, when Bile goes questing, I think they go, they kind of go all over the place, and they get people from other areas to come and help them out. So, Sid and Jose come from a different area to come help out here as well. The same kind of style that Carleon goes through. And then Toby's from somewhere else. And, you know, he's, um, yeah, he, it just, it, it's interesting. It's like, it's like a whole interesting thing. Uh, Toby's hard to make a true connection with. He does kind of remind me a little bit. Maybe a little bit like Batarkas, but um, yeah, that's all I can really say about this. Uh, let me know what you think, all your comments down below. I know I've I've talked about this for some time, and I hope you enjoy it. I like to kind of discuss this and, and go through and figure things out according to what I think it's probably going to be like. But we'll see when the game comes out. And when a game comes out, I will make more videos of this describing like more of their storyline and all that, so I'll make some videos of that if they got any cutscenes or they got any of that sort of stuff, I'll add that in here too. And we'll talk about all the characters and everything and, and I'm sure by that time a lot more people have more opinions as to what all this is kind of like. So I went through I described Narzalio Kingdom, I described the Republic of Guimol, I described the Shinobi tribe. Next up will be probably Mana Celestia Theocracy or the United Islands of Maravilla, or the Holy Gustava Empire. It just depends on uh, what comes out and what I can get my hands on, you know, and uh, talk about. But I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please leave some likes down below. Thank you for watching this, and I'll see you in the next video. And also, I've got some other videos coming out soon, too, and some other things as well that I'll put on YouTube. So if you want to follow me on Twitch, that'd be cool. Subscribe there. Uh, subscribe on YouTube, whichever, wherever. I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Game over. It's over.
over. When I say it is over.